Hello, this is Dr. McGabel. Let's do a quick review of random variables. In this quick review, we'll cover a quick introduction of random variables, the CDF, cumulative distribution function, probability density function, and we'll give some notes about continuous random variables, some examples, and we'll conclude with several known random variables and the conditional probability. Now, a random variable is a mapping from the sample space to real numbers. We have experiment. The moment we assign numbers to the outcome, we call it a random variables. So it becomes a random variable. Instead of saying head and tail, we can say it's a zero or one as outcome. So we can consider the outcome of the random experiment as a random variable if we are giving them, if we are giving the, if we are giving the outputs specific numbers. Random variables could be discrete or continuous. In this course, we will need both. We will deal with discrete and continuous. Now, usually the random variable is, is referred to with a capital letter. Let x denotes the random variable, capital X, then small x will represent the specific value or outcome. So capital X for the random variable and small x for the outcome. If we are dealing with a discrete random variable, then the probability of this random variable for specific value of x, if we sum all possible values of x, the answer should be 1. Now, capital B represents, as I mentioned, the probability, capital X is the random variable, and small x is the specific outcome. To represent random variables, we need the cumulative distribution function. So what is the CDF, the cumulative distribution function? It represents the probability of the random variable being less than or equal to a given value. And the, 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 the CDF is referred to as capital F. The CDF is usually represented with capital letter. And it has the following properties. First, it's always positive quantity because it represents probability. If you take small x to be infinity, then the answer would be 1 because the probability of being less than or equal to infinity is always the case. So we have 1. If you start at minus infinity, then we have 0. So it goes from 0 to 1. And it's always positive, of course. And for values of x greater x2 greater than x1, you expect that the CDF will be either greater or equal, which means it's a non-decreasing function. It could be the same. It doesn't have to be increasing, but it cannot decrease. So we say CDF is a non-decreasing function. Here are a few examples. For the discrete example case, we have it starts at 0, it goes to maximum of 1 at infinity, and it's always positive. Remember that we have this solid circle to represent to represent uh, the, uh, an included value and hollow circle to represent excluded value because we said less than or equal so we have uh, the solid to be here uh, the lower figure shows you um, kind of a MATLAB figures two figures a continuous CDF where we have a gradual increase or a discrete remember that this is not perfect because um, we're showing uh, the vertical line, it's a MATLAB plot, but if, if you want to be more accurate, then you have nothing here, you have hollow circle and you have solid circle. But it's usually uh, understood. We also have uh, the PDF to represent the random variables. So what is the PDF? It's the probability density function. It's a density function. Now, the probability density function is also used to characterize or represent random variables. The relation between the PDF and the CDF, we know that the PDF is a differential of the CDF. And again, it's an un, uh, and uh, we, we know that if you want to find the probability of x being between two different values, if you have a range of values, then you integrate. Remember that it's a density function. So if you want, if you make x1 to be minus infinity, then you get the CDF. 
and always the area under the PDF must equal to one. Once you integrate, you get you get it to be one. In case of discrete, we we add the numbers. Sometimes, rather than plotting the probability density function, we plot the probability mass function. You know that mass is the kind of the integral of of the density. So instead of showing delta function here, we just give the exact value, and we get we call it the probability mass function. Okay. However, the true probability density function will be made of deltas, arrows. So we have arrows here, and it's a density. Once you integrate, you get the value. So the PDF for discrete random variable will be made of the probabilities and scaled by delta, or delta scaled by the exact probability. If you are not sure, please review the difference between PDF and probability mass function. It's just two different ways of representing the random variable. They're very similar. Here are a few notes about non-continuous random variables. Remember that, uh, uh, sorry, uh, here are some notes on continuous random variables. Remember that if your random variable is continuous, then we'll have a range of values that the random variable can cover. And we have infinite number of possibilities. So if you assume that, for example, that they are all equally likely, then, and you have infinite number of them, then the probability of the individual one will be zero, because you are adding infinite number of a quantity. So if it's more than zero, then you get infinity. We want the sum always equal to one. So this is kind of philosophical uh, discussion, but uh, we know that here, if the probability equal to zero for a continuous random variable, it, it, it means it is one of the possible outcomes. So usually we don't deal about exact value in random continuous random variables. Usually we deal, the meaningful probability is to take a range of values and then find the probability. So probability of x being between two different values, it's the CDF at x2 minus the CDF at x1. And that's the integral between two values. So if fx is continuous, usually we, we look at a range of values rather than one. Uh, the uniform random variable. One of the examples of uh, random variables is the uniform random variable. It's very popular because it looks like fair. x is uniform, it takes values between a and b with equal probability. So the question says here, derive and sketch the cumulative distribution function fx and show that its area equal to 1. If you look at the figure here, if you have a uniform between a and b, it's going to be constant because it's uniform. There is no variation. And because we have to keep the area equal to 1, then the length here is b minus a. So the height must be 1 over b minus a so that the multiplication the height and the width should give you 1. So this is why we have a scale factor of 1 over b minus a. If you want to sketch the CDF, it's nothing but the integral of the PDF. So it's going to be the area as you move your line here. Okay, as we move, the area here starts to increase. So we have the area. And as we move the line to the right, to the left, to the right, it's, it, the area start to increase in a linear fashion. So this is why we have the curve to be uh, linear. Integration of a constant is a, is a line. It starts at 0 at A, and it, it becomes 1 at B. Mathematically, we can write the, CD, the PDF as 0 for x less than A, 0 for x greater than B, and it must be equal to 1 over B minus A for the range of values where the value is selected between A and B. Another example, if you look at the Gaussian random variable, which is very popular, the Gaussian random variable uh, with zero mean and unit variance, the standard normal, we call it the standard normal. Uh, it's a normal distribution. It's called Gauss Gaussian or normal. And we call it standard normal if the mean equal to zero and the variance equal to one. So if you want to find the PDF, you integrate 
there is no clause form expression for the integration it's going to be uh, written explicitly as integration and if you want to find the values you need to use tables or error function or q function or error function complementary using MATLAB but we cannot find the integration as clause form so if somebody says sketch the probability density and distribution function of the normal uh, variable x with mean you should be able to sketch and it should look like this now remember that we have a shift which is the mean and we have the width controlled by the variance so uh, some of the examples here so uh, you can see the green has a this center value is the mean minus two and these have a variance uh, have a mean of zero and they are different in terms of variance the wider the curve it means we have higher variance or standard deviation and remember that if you increase the width you have to lower the height because you have to keep the area equal to one so if you want to sketch Gaussian with different variance make sure that you keep the area equal to one so you don't start at the same height that's the second example which is the Gaussian random variable now several other examples of random variables include uh, or if you want to talk about uh, several random variables not just one so we have a joint pdf like uh, the joint distribution function we can also talk about the joint pdf the relation between the pdf and the cdf as we learned before it's just a review it is uh, the second derivative sorry it's the uh, we have partial differentiation we, we do the differentiation twice now also if you want to find the volume now we talk about volume because it's it's a uh, two-dimensional if you take the double integral you should get one we can find the marginal CDF by integrating over one variable so if you integrate with respect to X from minus infinity then we have uh, to, uh, to alpha then we have uh, we have marginalized one random variable um, we can also find the marginal PDF and we can also uh, represent different joint uh, uh, characteristics of, 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 the, of the several random variables this is very important because you're really studying practical example the relation between height and width and width at the same time the GBA with time of study um, the noise in the system and the interference so you can you can study multiple things together exercise obtain f of y from the joint distribution function we're giving you the x write the equation how to find y from uh, from the joint that should be simple you can do it by inspection the conditional probability just like we have the joint we can also find uh, and uh, we can find the conditional probability starting with the joint if you want to find just like probability if you want to find the conditional probability conditioning over x it's the joint PDF divided by the marginal PDF and in case if x and y are statistically independent just like in probability then the joint PDF will be the multiplication of the individual PDFs okay so please remember this is just a quick review if you want to have a full review and slow understanding and perfect understanding of the topic you can visit my website there is a full website about uh, statistics and probability for um, for uh, for engineers and I would put the, the link uh, in the description thank you for being good listeners